In this video, I will introduce some basic concepts of stochastic processes and Markov chains. A stochastic process is also called a random process. It describes how a random variable evolves over time. Let xt be the value of some variable at time t. xt is a random variable and it is not known with certainty before time t. An example of xt is the number of students in the classroom 10 minutes after the class starts. Some students may come in late, so we don't know the value of xt for sure before time t. xt is called the state of the stochastic process. If the state of a stochastic process can be observed at discrete time instants, then it is called a discrete time stochastic process. If the state of a stochastic process can be observed at any continuous time, then it is called a continuous time stochastic process. In this introductory course, we only discuss discrete time stochastic processes. A discrete time stochastic process is a Markov chain if, for t is equal to 0, 1, 2, and so on, the states have the following relation. This is an equation. The left-hand side is a conditional probability. It represents the probability that at time t plus 1, the state is i t plus 1, given that at time 0, the state is i0. At time 1, the state is i1. At time t, the state is i t. The right-hand side is also a conditional probability. It represents the probability that at time t plus 1, the state is i t plus 1 given that at time t the state is i t. The equation means the probability distribution of the state at time t plus 1 depends only on the state at time t. It does not depend on the states before time t. The initial state of the Markov chain can be described as an initial probability distribution. Let qi be the probability that the chain is in state i at time 0. If we have a total of s different states, then we call the vector q is equal to q1, q2, through qs, the initial probability distribution of the Markov chain. The sum of q1 through qs is equal to 1, or 100%. This conditional probability represents the probability that the system will be in state j at time t plus 1, given it is in state i at time t. A Markov chain is called a stationary Markov chain if this probability is independent of time t. That means the probability that the system will be in state j at time t plus 1, given it is in state i at time t, is equal to the probability that the system will be in state j at time t, given it is in state i at time t minus 1, which is also equal to the probability that the system will be in state j at time 1, given it is in state i at time 0. Since this probability does not change, we we'll give it a shorter name, Pij. Pij is called the transition probability from state i at a previous time to state j at the current time. If we have a total of s states, the transition probability from one state to another can be displayed as an s by s matrix, like this. Since these elements are all probabilities, they should all be greater than or equal to 0, but less than or equal to 1. Also, the probability in each row must sum to 1. That means, if the Markov chain is in state i at time t, it must transit to one of the s states at time t plus 1. So the sum should be equal to 1. There is no such requirement for the columns. After all these preparations, let's see an example. This is a gambling problem. Suppose that you start with $20 at time 0. You bet $10 each time in a gamble. You win with a probability of 0 0.3 and lose with a probability of 0 0.7 in each gamble. You will continue to gamble until you have $0 or $40. $0 means you don't have any money left. $40 means you win $20 from your opponent, and the opponent doesn't have any money left. 
Now let's try to model this problem as a Markov chain. We use xt to represent the money you have after each gamble at time t. At the beginning of the gamble, you have x0 is equal to $20. When you gamble for the first time, there's a 30% chance that you will win. That means you will have $30 afterwards. There's a 70% chance that you will lose. That means you will have $10 afterwards. If you have $30 now and continue to gamble, there's a 30% chance that you will win and you will have $40. There's a 70% chance that you will lose and you will have $20. If you have $10 now and continue to gamble, there is a 30% chance that you will win and you will have $20. There is a 70% chance that you will lose and you will have $0. If you have $0, the game is over and you will be trapped in this state with a probability of 100%. Similarly, if you have $40, the game is also over and you will be trapped in this state with a probability of 100%. This is called a state transition diagram. Each node represents a state. Let's mark the states as 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Each arc ij represents the transition probability pij. Based on this diagram, we can write out the state transition probability matrix. For example, p3, 2 is equal to 0.7. It means, from state 3 to state 2, the transition probability is 0.7, or 70%. Because we start at state 3, so the initial probability distribution is this. We are 100% at state 3 at the beginning. This is a Markov chain because the amount of money you have at time t plus 1 only depends on the amount of money at time t. It does not depend on the amount of money you have before t. Let's see another example. A box contains two white golf balls. Choose a ball randomly and then flip a coin. If the ball is white and the coin shows heads, paint the ball red and put it back. If the ball is white and the coin shows tails, Paint the bow blue and put it back. If the bow is painted, then directly change the color from red to blue or from blue to red and put it back, no matter whether the coin shows heads or tails. Now let's build the Markov chain for this problem. xt is defined as a vector w, r, b which are the numbers of white, red, and blue balls, respectively, in the box at time t. At the beginning, x0 is equal to 2, 0, and 0. That means 2 white balls, 0 red balls, and 0 blue balls. Now let's pick a ball randomly. It must be a white ball. Then flip a coin. If the coin shows heads, paint the ball red. Then the number of white balls will be reduced by 1, and the number of red balls will be increased by 1. We end up in the state 1, 1, 0. The probability of being heads is 50%, so the transition probability is 0 0.5. If the coin shows tails, paint the ball blue, then the number of white balls will be reduced by 1, and the number of blue balls will be increased by 1 we end up in the state 1, 0, 1. The probability of being tails is 50%, so the transition probability is 0 0.5. Now let's consider the second state. Let's pick a ball randomly. It will be a red ball with a 50% probability. If it's red, we directly change its color and paint it blue. Then the number of the red balls will be reduced by 1, and the number of blue balls will be increased by 1. We end up in the state 1, 0, 1. So the transition probability is 0 0.5. When we pick the ball, it will be a white ball with a 50% probability. If it is white, 
and if the coin shows heads, paints the ball red, then the number of white balls will be reduced by one, as the number of red balls will be increased by one. We end up in the state zero two zero. The probability of being heads is fifty percent, so the transition probability is zero point five times zero point five is equal to zero point two five. If it's white, and if the coin shows tails, paint the ball blue. Then the number of white balls will be reduced by one, and the number of blue balls will be increased by one. We end up in the state zero one one. The probability of being tails is fifty percent, so the transition probability is zero point five times zero point five is equal to zero point two five. Similarly, we can determine other states and the corresponding transition probabilities. Let's mark the states as one, two, three, four, five, and six. Based on this diagram, we can write out the state transition probability matrix. Because we start at state one, so the initial probability distribution is this. This is also a mark of gen. Okay, I just introduced some basic concepts of stochastic processes and mark of chains. Thanks for watching.